Welcome back. Um, we've got the engine pretty much built now, and I'm getting onto these carbies. They're from the GSX 400F. Uh, this bike hasn't run for a long time. You can see it's pretty dirty, so I'm going to strip these right down, uh, soda blast them, and put a, a new kit through it with bigger jets, and uh, just get it ready, and hopefully this engine starts. So I'll just go through what I do to pull these things apart. I'm not a big fan of those Phillips head screws and they can be quite tight so um, there is a bit of a trick to getting those off but you can see in the carbies here pretty gunky and for what I want I want it to be nice and clean so first screw as usual tight best thing to do is just get some vice grips uh, give it a quick quick turn once it breaks the seal they normally come off and I've just repeated that process so you don't have to watch it the whole for every screw because it's pretty much 50% of those were like that. So first thing is just take off this mounting bracket <coughs> off the bottom. It's got eight screws in it. And then once that's off, flick it over, do the same thing. There's another bracket holding the top. Um, once that's out, before the carbies will pull apart, you need to pull apart the choke assembly, which is just... A shaft with a little fork which pulls on each of the choke valves so you just undo the Phillips head screw on each of those four uh, once they're loose um, that that shaft should just pull out and it's also got one screw at the end which is here just that holds that shaft in play so take that screw out put it aside so you don't lose it there's actually a little washer behind there you'll see it I actually forgot and it falls out here in a sec. There we go. Make sure you don't lose that. Um, slide the choke shaft out. Get one fork out at a time. And it comes apart pretty easy. Once that shaft's out, the carbs will just pull apart. They're only held by little connectors with O-ring seals. So it's no big drama to um, pull them apart. So as you can see, as I said before, they're pretty gunky. Want to just make these nice and clean, and see if I can, you know, end up with something that looks pretty neat. So I mark these one, two, three, four, just so I know the order. Um, they are slightly different the way they're mounted, so it's a good idea to mark them. So once, uh, as I said before, you've got the choke out, they just pull apart. Let's see a few years worth of grime and dust and leaves and so forth pull them apart <coughs> and then um, what I do here is just pull out the fuel fittings um, I'll probably put new o-rings on that there's one two three four or five of those fittings um, get them all out if you're gonna soda blast uh, I just use bicarb soda it works pretty good um, there are a lot of little uh, um, orifice holes in these carbies so you just want to make sure that you've got them pulled right down I actually decided not to pull the butterflies out I don't think it's necessary it's just too much effort so here they are pulled apart and lined up in the order they came from so once you get to this point you want to start stripping down each carby I don't think it's important to match bowl for bowl or diaphragm for diaphragm um, just pull them all apart. There's four screws in the bottom of the bowl. Uh, they may be hard to get out, but uh, if they are, a pair of pliers. So you can see there's a bit of gunk in there. They're not too bad. That's the float and the primary and secondary jet in that end. Uh, to get that float out, just hold this carby in the vise. And those pins just need to be knocked out. They're, they're really not very tight at all. Pull it out from one end, lift the float out. Once the float's out, there's a little mounting bracket that holds the, uh, there's a little inlet strainer and and um, float valve, I suppose. So pull that out. Sometimes it comes out by hand, but most of the time you need a pair of pliers or something like that, like I'm doing here. Pull that out. Then take the jets out. Uh, there's a little there's a little float valve. Um, take the jets out. They're not normally that hard to get out. There's one jet and there's another one in the hole in front of that. 
they can be tight sometimes, so take your time. You don't want to strip them out. I have actually had that problem before and I've had to drill it out, which is a real pain and risky bit of work. So once that's out, turn it upside down. Uh, you can do this in a few different orders, but I take the choke mechanism out at this point. So it's just a 12 mil unscrews, a little seat in there with a spring. Nothing complicated. Same thing as these screws are tight, vice grips, hang on to them, give them a quick turn. Undo this diaphragm top. You need to be very careful when you take this off. The diaphragm in here is quite delicate, so uh, there's a quite a long spring that holds the diaphragm down underneath this cap. And this this uh, carby and bike hasn't been run for a very long time, so who knows what's going to be in here. But just be careful taking the diaphragms out. Normally those caps just lift off. Sometimes they're like this where they've you know, been sitting around a long time, they're a bit tight, so maybe it needs a bit of leverage with a screwdriver or something similar. Uh, this pulls off, you see the spring in a moment, take that spring out. Now on that diaphragm you can see there's one little uh, edge just there where it sticks out a bit further. I normally get something just to gently stick under there, try to break this seal and gently pull it off and that will just slide straight out with the diaphragm and the needle all attached. Put that to one side. And there's another jet in there which uh, you'll see where the screwdriver is, you can't see it in this image but there is a little one there so unscrew that as well. And then really the last thing to do is just the pilot jet which is on the other side of the carby and you'll see this in a sec. Uh, oh and also push this out as well. That comes out easily. So, yep, at this point, pilot, pilot needle valve is the last thing to come out. This one, there were two that come out no problem. There were two that were actually jammed up. So this is not always this easy. These things can be a total pain. So here's an example of one. A few things you can do. On this occasion, I tried to heat it up a little bit. 50% of the time, it'll come out. A bit of WD-40. Uh, this particular one didn't want to cooperate at all and was really jammed in there so uh, Can happen Some people might just leave this. I didn't want to leave it because I wanted to be able to adjust it So I had to get quite serious and get the drill out uh, You do need to know what you're doing when you start doing this Obviously I've picked the drill that is smaller than the thread size and I'm careful how far I, I drill it in um, you can drill these and then use an easy out. I didn't actually have an easy out this size, so what I did was I ground down an old Allen key I had, which you'll see in a sec, and made it into a bit of a taper, and I just tapped it in there, and luckily I was able to get this thing out. But if you get to this point, it is getting serious. This is uh, needs quite a bit of care. So here's this Allen key doesn't always work but it worked with this get the right size make it just like wedges in there you just want it to be a light tap in uh, it does start to turn I get one or two turns and then it doesn't want to cooperate again so what I did is I just got the drill back out I drilled deeper probably another uh, couple of mil and then I hammered that allen key in again and it eventually came out so yeah it's not all not always easy uh, you do need to be patient so you'll see in a sec uh, this is where i've drilled it out further you can see how much deeper that's gone in and then it finally wants to come out so i was lucky no damage to the thread no problem anywhere other than i need now I need to go and buy actually two more needle valves i've got the other one out a bit easier than that this one but the head's damaged, so search is on for a couple of those. This is the carby all pulled apart just before I soda blast. Um, as I said, I don't think the order that they go back in is that important. Um, they're not they're not tailor fitted for each carby, so just as long as you keep them, uh, you know, so you don't lose any parts. You can see all the gunk here. Uh, I've bought a little soda blaster, or it's actually a sand blaster, and what I've done is, instead of putting sand in it, I've put bicarb soda. Bicarb soda is real cheap, it's not as harsh as sand, 
and it cleans this stuff up really good. Uh, it's quite a messy job, so uh, you'll only see a few seconds of footage of how this actually works because dust goes everywhere. So here's the bicarb soda and the blaster. Make sure you've got a face mask and it works really good. You can do it wet, which I've done, and dry. Uh, I think it works a little bit better dry, but you can get a quick idea here how effective it is. Um, I probably spent a good hour, hour and a half doing these, so this is what the end result looks like. I actually soda blasted those chrome caps as well, and they come up awesome. So you can see that. You do have to be patient. Um, it is a dirty job. Take your time, though, and you can get good results, and, you know, it only costs few bucks so very cheap uh, I need to buy some parts now so I'm going to put a, a bigger jet kit through this and so I need some new bowl gaskets and some needle valves so I'll order that stuff and I'll make another video on the final assembly so there you go that's how you pull it apart clean it up and this is getting close to reassembly stay tuned <laughs>